Again, I'd like to extend a uh, welcome to everyone who's joining us. Good morning or good evening, as the case may be. We do have people attending uh, globally. Uh, we're seeing people logging in from Australia, from South America, from Europe, and also from North America as well. So good morning or good evening, as the case may be. And we've got uh, uh, quite a few signed up here. We'll just hang on for about another 30 seconds, 45 seconds perhaps, and, uh, and try to get everybody as we get a good clean start so everybody can, uh, can hear the entire presentation. Well, all right then, we'll get started. Um, if you have not attended a uh, member's update via webinar, it's very easy to do. You should be seeing uh, the PowerPoint on your screen uh, as I'm speaking. There are also methods of asking questions um, easily, easily accomplished. Uh, if you look at the go to webinar menu on your screen, you have the ability to electronically raise your hand. Uh, just do so and, and uh, I'll know that you have a question and what I will do is, is uh, unmute you so you can ask your question or you may also type it in to the chat box that is located at the bottom of the webinar, go to webinar uh, dialog box as well. So there are two methods there that you can um, you can use to to ask a question. So again, we'll just uh, give it ten seconds or so, and we'll get started. Actually, that little delay just allows me to sip on my coffee. <laughs> So let's get started. Uh, again, thank you for taking the time to attend our first quarter 2015 members update. Um, some of the things that we're going to uh, discuss and talk about this morning is uh, dive insurance. It's been a very long road and we're coming to the end of that road, so we're happy about that. Uh, some some changes within the first quarter 2015 standards and procedures. Um, these, by the way, are, and I'll remind you again, are live at the moment up on the website so you can see them now. And they're also in the uh, uh, members update that went out via newsletter and email as well. Uh, just briefly about new products and services uh, that we have uh, beginning last last fall in DEMA. Facility products, uh, depending on your region, and uh, about our brand awareness and marketing efforts that we're doing. Uh, we'll talk uh, about a new RO that's come on board, new regional office, as well as questions that we receive at, uh, at headquarters. And what's coming up... Uh, uh, in the uh, very near future. And we'll talk about ITI's pledge to you that we started last fall. So um, basically our 2015 professional liability insurance program is, is due to kick off within just a few days, um, basically within the week that's coming up. The program itself is nearly identical to the former Willis program. Um, with a few changes and some positive changes, and and that is, uh, uh, you, you know, basically the the amount of coverage available to you. Uh, we're finding that it is is uh, it's increased. The coverage is increased in in terms of uh, if there is any unfortunate litigation, the uh, payout amounts are are higher. We've had to do that uh, just based on some of the recent litigations that have gone on uh, with with lawsuits. So um, 
that, that's an important feature and uh, you can see the obvious benefit to that. Uh, just like our last program with Willis, this one is underwritten by Lloyds of London in, in one of its syndicates. And uh, the company that's brokering this is called First Dive. Um, and that's headed up by Ryan Meyer. You'll, you'll remember the name Peter Meyer, uh, who for many, many years worked very closely hand-in-hand -hand with SDI and TDI and our insurance. Uh, Peter being a very experienced, uh, not only insurance uh, broker and very familiar with dive insurance, but Peter was also an active instructor as well as operating a uh, charter vessel as well. So Peter was very familiar with the with the industry overall. Uh, his son Ryan is picking up the the ball now and is doing the, the bulk of the work. Uh, Ryan having been involved in the insurance industry for a number of years as well. So it's, it's just a natural progression, if you will, um, on this. Uh, initially, uh, uh, our brokers here in North America are located in Pennsylvania in the States and Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. And our initial offering when we launch here in the, in the next coming days it's going to be in, in uh, North America. Uh, however, it's important to notice that the policy that we have is a global policy. It is going to be available on a global basis um, over the coming weeks and, and months. And I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. There's also, there will be a link uh, up on the website for quotes on dive centers and charter boats, for example, so that here in North America, you, you'll be able to get a quote for that and, uh, and information. As I mentioned, it is a global policy. Um, we have a network of brokers globally um, that work hand in hand with the broca brokers located in Pennsylvania and Canada to be able to offer this policy, policy on a global basis. Now, with that being said, the next launch after North America will be Australia. Uh, so we will have insurance available there. We should have it in place um, for the next insurance season that uh, is around September. From there, we'll then start branching out into the UK and the rest of the Asia Pacific region from there. So as I mentioned, next launch in Australia. Um, we're glad to have this uh, behind us. It's, it's been a difficult road, long road, uh, something that was out of our control that impacted us greatly, but we're, we're happy to be heading out on this now. So, um, Earlier I mentioned that the changes to the standards and procedures on the quarterly update here, you can, those are live on the website and are always the, the most recent. So where do you find those? Log in to tdisdi.com, log in as an instructor or an instructor trainer, and, <clears throat> excuse me, your screen on the, on the tabs across the top, just select Tools, and from Tools on the left-hand side, you'll see a link for Standards and Procedures. You'll also see a link for the for the first quarter training update or the updates as as well so that's where you can find them I'm gonna pause here just for a moment and I'm going to scan the list of attendees to see if we have any questions so just bear with me for a moment as I uh, check for that Uh, Lou, I noticed you have your uh, your uh, question mark there. Go go ahead with your question. I've unmuted you. Uh, Lou, if you have a question, I've unmuted you. So go ahead and ask your question. We're not required locally. I'm sorry, I, I only heard the last part about being required locally. What was your first part of the question? Sorry.
All right, Lou, I'm sorry I'm, I'm not hearing you uh, in what your question was. If uh, if you could just put that into the chat box or you can send it to me directly at paul.montgomery at tdisdi.com and we'll have that answered for you. Uh, Pierre, I noticed that uh, you've got a question as well. I've unmuted you. Go right ahead with your question. That's right, Paul. I've actually um, typed my question in the question box for you. Uh, Pierre, if you could check your mic levels, uh, you're you're very very uh, uh, low in, in the in the sound there, and I apologize for that. Could you ask that one more time? That's right, Paul. It's actually just I typed it in the type box. Oh, okay. No worries. That that was a lot better. I could hear you. <laughs> um, I will, Pierre. Thank you very much. And this may very well be followed up by a glass of wine. Pierre is uh, encouraging me to enjoy my coffee while he enjoys. Uh, uh, a beverage as, as well, so thank you for that. All right, we'll get back to the update here. I'll just quickly scan one more time to check for questions. I appreciate your uh, your, your patience here. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, just log in to the website as an instructor or, or uh, instructor trainer or facility admin for that matter. And uh, just go to uh, tools, uh, you know, the tab labeled tools, and then on the side, left-hand side, select standards and procedures and go from there. So well, let's get into those uh, standard changes and, and additions. One of the changes we made has to do with our advanced diver program. Not advanced adventure, but advanced diver. And you'll remember from the very beginning, SDI had a far different advanced diver uh, program, which required the individual to have at least 25 dives as well as four specialties. That program still exists. However, we have made a change in that those four specialties can be either SDI, TDI, or ERDI specialties. So any four of that. And the same thing applies to the Master Scuba Diver introduction as well. Um, in, in the language being changed and the requirements, we now can accept four SDI, TDI, or ERDI specialties. So if you have someone with, say, dry suit, navigation, uh, TDI nitrox, and TDI intro to tech, any those four will be fine for advanced diver or master scuba diver certifications. Uh, in the leadership standards, uh, we made some language changes. Uh, in the dive master prerequisites, uh, advanced diver was changed to advanced adventure diver uh, to come into line with, with what everybody is doing in the industry. Solo diver uh, who who can teach some uh, language changes as, as well, uh, showing the verification of completing the solo diver e-learning course. Uh, if it's available in, in the language, uh, you know, in, in that region, so that language has been added. And again, all of these changes are available and live now, and can be seen on the website. Scubility standards, uh, we did make some changes there um, in that we removed uh, some information from the duration section that was that was apparently not, not correct. So um, that's been changed there. Also, just as, uh, as a note for anyone who is interested in scubility and who may be attending DEMA um, in the first week of November, HQ uh, is planning to offer a scubility uh, instructor course um, just in the days prior to DEMA. So something to keep in the back of your, your mind uh, in that regard. Uh, one of the biggest changes that we made was to a regional office affiliation on a global basis. 
And that language has now changed to be that members at all levels, dive master, assistant instructor, instructor ITs, staff ITs, uh, IT staff are required to be affiliated with a regional office where they will be residing for four months or longer. Previously, this was two months. This is now um, in the standards. It, it, that language was not in the standards before. It is now, and the period of time is four months or longer. So now, obviously, a member can travel to, to any region and teach. Um, but as long if they're there for four months or longer, they're going to need to, to change that office to that region. Uh, and the same applies to new members when they're registered initially as a new member. Uh, they need to be affili affiliated with a regional office uh, where they're going to be residing, their country of residence. So an IT would submit that leadership application directly to the appropriate regional office. So if you're an instructor trainer in country A and your instructor candidate is a resident of country B, then that leadership application paperwork goes to country B. As always, diver level, of course, would be submitted to the regional office which they're affiliated with. If, if you as an IT or as an instructor candidate uh, for a new course, you're not sure, uh, simply contact uh, World HQ and, and we can help you with that. All right, well, I'm just going to take another moment to uh, check for questions here. If you could just bear with me for a moment. Okay, Lou, uh, uh, I see your question here. Thank you for that. Um, Lou's question is, is insurance required in countries that do not require it locally? And in other words, um, the country of residence and where they're training, um, if they do not require insurance and it's outside North America, obviously, then you're not required to have insurance. Certainly, it's a good idea if it's available. However, if it's not required, then um, no, it would not be required. So, all new. Just to follow up on this, and and um, all new members required to be registered and affiliated with a regional office of their country of residence. Obviously, our members can teach anywhere at any time. That's not a problem. Just as a courtesy, it's a good idea to contact the regional office in the area that they are teaching so that should there be any local law, rules, regulations, uh, they need to know about that. Uh, for example, in Israel, you must be affiliated with a dive center. Uh, I believe Malta is the same way. You must be affiliated with a dive center. Uh, no, no matter where you're coming from, where you're registered. Um, there are some countries that solo diving and solo diver courses are not legally allowed to be conducted. So it's things like that that you may not be familiar with when, when traveling. So uh, TDI standards and procedures changes, uh, some changes in the diver standards, mostly having to do with CCRs. Uh, in the course overview matrix in the standards, uh, number 30 was added to, um, and that, that indicates the number of hours uh, on the CCR unit and six months of CCR diving experience. Um, so you, you can, again, see this matrix um, in, in part two of the diver standards, and, it, and it's the very first one there. So. And then in number 39, under that matrix, we also added CAVE to uh, Introductory Diver and clarified the requirements on that. Uh, mixed gas CCR course structure duration in the open water. Um, in 32, which is covering mixed gas CCR course structure, we added items 6 and 7 which uh, stipulates what's required in terms of hours and dives. And um, 
helps to define and allow a crossover path, um, you know, should they change units or get different units. Um, or if they're coming from open circuit and they're already holding a helium-based breathing gas certification, uh, it outlines that. And again, I'll emphasize that these are up on the website now. You can log in as an instructor, instructor trainer, go to tools, go to standards and procedures, and you can see them there. Uh, we also made a change in the advanced mixed gas in that anyone with a Poseidon 7, uh, the unit must be equipped with a proper battery with the uh, uh, full 100 meter upgrade uh, in order to, to have that. So, uh, Leadership standards for TDI and specifically side mount, um, we've added in that the instructor must be certified as a side mount diver uh, for an administrative route, uh, upgrade to um, TDI side mount diver instructor. So you're gonna have to hold that or the equivalent uh, to upgrade. Uh, also some changes here about Airedale instructor prerequisites. Uh, the time has been edited um, in the minimum experience. And again, this is, I want to emphasize live up on the website so you can read the actual standard. Uh, you need, do need to provide proof of a minimum of 100 log dives and a minimum of 100 hours on the specific unit uh, and be a rebreather diver. Uh, not necessarily on that unit, but uh, have been a rebreather diver for a minimum of 12 months. And again, that follows through also with Air Delo and Deco as well. Just going to pause here just for a moment and check for questions. If you could just bear with me, please. Okay, we've got a couple of questions here and I'm going to try to expand the, the box here so I can see it better. Uh, uh, Lou, you're asking where's the regional office in Brazil? It physically is located in Brasilia. Uh, I've got a slide coming up um, just in a few minutes here and uh, um, that will answer your question about the local uh, regional office there. And there's another question uh, regarding insurance and medical, uh, a medical question. And that is, it, will there be an age restriction regardless of whether one has a medical or a stress test uh, to prove them uh, fit to dive? Uh, there is a move with some insurance companies and some tour operators to provide services to uh, um, people that are older in age and may or may not be, it's questionable whether they are fit to dive or, or, or not. So um, that's an interesting point. Ultimately, as an operator, as an instructor or dive center, um, you have the, you have the right and ability to accept your customer or not to accept your customer. Um, it, in, in the end, that's your choice. So if you have somebody who is obviously, uh, obviously not fit for diving, meaning they are uh, severely obese or morbidly obese uh, or other issues, you certainly um, can elect not to allow that person to, to go forward. While I know that may prompt more questions in your mind and also uh, uh, does not give a quite complete answer, um, it, it's an important point and it's one that uh, what I'll do is, is bring to, um, to Peter Meyer by way of Brian 
uh, about it and and get an exact more exact answer for you um, and I just want to see uh, who, the person that's asking that is uh, is uh, uh, David so let me go look through the attendee uh, list here and see if we can find you and what I'll do is I will uh, follow up David with a uh, with an email to you about that also seeing another question uh, where will there be a link on the site for insurance uh, information yes there will be uh, just as soon as it's launched uh, in fact the links are being tested as we speak um, the past couple of days so there will be a uh, a link up there Kevin so all right continuing on uh, existing CCR um, uh, instructors who wish to cross over to a different unit um, we've we've updated the uh, language there uh, obviously approval is always subject to uh, HQ training department review as well as the unit manufacturer as you know historically um, and continuing to work with unit manufacturers um, hand in hand to approve instructors on on not only new units but also units new to the instructor so any uh, TDI read breathing instructors who wish to cross over to another PDI approved rebreather, um, do have to complete an entry level instructor course with an IT on the unit they wish to cross over to. So if you're teaching on brand A and you wish to teach on brand B, you will need to seek out a qualified IT on brand B so that you can do at least an entry level instructor course with that. Um, so to qualify you must be an active uh, CCR instructor obviously with TDI uh, verify that formal training with the manufacturer or uh, or a uh, you know recognized agency technical agency at the diver level if not you're gonna have to see see an IT also uh, verify that minimum of 50 hours experience and then once that uh, entry-level instructor training has been completed, apply, um, you know, to, to HQ directly as well. So uh, if you're an IT, you're also going to, uh, and you're crossing over from a different unit, you're also going to have to meet the requirement of having issued at least five diver um, at each level that you're applying for. So. If you're holding air dill and you're going to advance mixed gas or mixed gas, you're going to have to issue at least five divers on that. Again, I want to emphasize that these new standards are up on the website for you to see and, and take a look at. Uh, briefly, you're going to take a pause and check for questions. And so far, so good. So we're all right. We've been saying a new and improved website, tdisdi.com, since last fall, and just wanted to emphasize that uh, a lot of changes did t take place, uh, especially at the user level for uh, for members up through including instructors, instructor trainers, and, and facilities. Uh, all sections of the site are compatible with, with um, near I'm gonna say nearly any type of device with a browser uh, certainly four months from now somebody could come out with a, a device that is uh, brand new revolutionary and and will not work but for the moment uh, any mobile device including uh, um, Apple products utilizing iOS uh, Windows phones uh, Android phones and tablets um, they're compatible and they're compatible with nearly every browser um, you know being used like Chrome Firefox Safari um, Internet Explorer Explorer obviously there could very well be a uh, a uh, uh, browser that comes along and and is not compatible we, we simply cannot predict the future in terms of 
some of the technology part, but for the most part, we're, we're enjoying 99.9% compatibility. It certainly is a lot more user-friendly to use now, um, and if you're finding that you're not remembering something or do have a question, there are a number of tutorial videos available. They're on YouTube. There's also a link um, as well when you're logged in um, and uh, as, as a facility or an instructor member, and you, you can find that link down in the lower right-hand corner. In fact, I'll have a screenshot of it in just a moment. One of the services that we've been doing since last fall and continue to do is a website audit of your, uh, of your facility's website. And basically our, our marketing department will take a look at your website uh, to see, well, basically how it's appearing to search, en search engines and uh, how it's getting its word out there and its availability. Uh, there's no charge for this. It's an important tool, um, and on we're, we're doing these several each week um, on a global basis. People are, are 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 requesting this service, and they're finding finding it very very uh, helpful as well. So, um, if you would like to have your website audited, um, just contact World HQ at tdisti.com, or you can contact myself at paul.montgomery at tdisdi.com and we'll get it to the marketing department for you. Um, earlier in the year, we took a look at other agencies and who is, um, who is possible to cross over from. And we, we've, in the past, weren't always quite sure about who we could accept and who we, who we couldn't. Well, that, equivalency spreadsheet for SDI crossovers is now up on the website. Um, and basically, if, if a instructor is belonging to an RSTC, RSTC Europe, ISO, or EUF recognized organization, they're available for crossover. And, and essentially, it's an administrative crossover, meaning they don't have to do teaching presentations and, and academic presentations and so on and so forth, okay. So uh, that's been updated and that's available up on the, on the website. Um, here in North America, we've started an IT incentive program um, and structured our crossover pricing so that ITs can, can do these crossovers to, to SDI and, and uh, structure it so it's a little bit more profitable for you. Um, just simply contact, um, Chris, uh, here at, e at HQ, or if you're outside North America, your regional office, or any details about that um, to get the uh, get the details. Here in North America, we do have uh, a new product that we brought on board last fall with another company called Dive First Aid. Currently, they're available in North America, uh, and we are starting to branch out, and and the company is is making this product available outside North America, and that is first aid kits. Um, they, these kits are, are well put together, hard or soft cover kits, uh, and various levels. So it's uh, good for your boat, good for charter operations, or in the dive center as well. If you are in North America, you can order it on the website. Uh, I'm gonna take another moment and just check for questions here. And I guess we're looking okay for the moment. So we'll continue on. Um, we do have new VIP course materials available. Uh, this was introduced last, uh, last fall at DEMA. The new manual with Knowledge Quest is, all, is also available on uh, e-learning. As you know, all of these materials, and, and actually the program was substantially changed. Um, and uh, to become more compl more compliant with uh, rules and regulations and laws that are out there. Um, and as such, we do require our current VIP instructors to go through an update by the end of 2016. We're scheduling these at a variety of shows. 
uh, throughout North America, and we are also putting a schedule together for outside North America as well. Uh, new Jaisu manual is is now available, and like all of our products that we launched when new, there's the student manual, the knowledge quest um, instructor guide, and is now available uh, e-learning as as well. Uh, it's it's been well received. We've had it out there since April, and uh, it's it's doing doing well. And it's also doing quite well on e-learning, actually, uh, which, which we're we're happy with as well. So, uh, so that's new. That's out there. Also, uh, new scuba discovery slates. These are a little smaller version than we had previously available in English, available in Spanish. Um, they are required, just as a reminder, they are required for all scuba discovery courses. Uh, we did update our SDI, TDI, ERDI backpacks. Um, apparently the update was very successful. We just recently ran out of those, um, but we uh, they are on order and, and will be on their way. So as well as new graphics for t-shirts um, are available. Most, if not all, of the regional offices have access to the new graphics so that they can print these shirts. Um, and if you are a regional office uh, listening in on this webinar, these graphics are available on the FTP site now. Uh, I just want to go backwards just for a, for a moment to uh, one other slide, and that is about the uh, materials, instructor resource CD. We are introducing uh, a new method of delivering electronic media, uh, such as instructor guides and instructor resources CDs. And we are moving away from the CDs and going to um, a memory stick as, uh, as time allows, meaning we're slowly making that change. So some of the initial TDI courses are going to be available in the next uh, week or so, uh, and then the other ones will come on board. So CDs will be disappearing, and the small memory sticks will be replacing them. Uh, new products and services, uh, three languages for SDI open water diver. We have launched in German, Portuguese, and Spanish. Uh, we are now working on TDI Nitrox. That will be the next one. But for now, uh, SDI Open Water is available, e-learning online in German, Portuguese, and Spanish. The method of utilizing this is very, very simple. You simply purchase the code from your regional office or from HQ or sign up online log in and then enter your code and in the upper right hand corner will be a drop down menu for languages and you just merely select German, Portuguese or Spanish. So that is live and, and out there now. Um, some facility products that uh, are new from DEMA, uh, point of, for here in North America, we have a, a point of purchase display that, that is new, that is two-sided, um, and you can uh, you know utilize for products on, on both sides. We do have some ROs that are sourcing these locally in their region and doing these as well. Uh, window decals have been updated as well as posters. The posters are a little smaller, taking less space in the classroom and and store, but still delivering the branding message as well. And you can see some of the uh, some of the examples there. Flowchart banners also updated uh, as well, and uh, a small welcome doormat that we have available to our facilities as as well as a clock. So. Uh, outside um, North America, why just merely check with your regional office. I'm going to take a moment, just check.
Uh, sorry about that. I've just noticed that uh, the audio was off, and, and my apologies uh, about that. Uh, we have some questions here. When will the European market, when's that going to open up for v, VIP instructors? Um, in the end of 2016, we're going to start with Asia Pacific, and then uh, we'll head towards the European market based on if there are enough to do it. So hopefully in the first part of 20, uh, 2017, we would do that. Um, Kevin asked about a download for instructor resources uh, that it would be handy. Kevin, I've made a note here uh, about that. Uh, certainly would be handy, and we'll bring that to, uh, to management's attention uh, for that as well. And Sherry is asking, are there any plans to put extended range trimix or advanced rec um, on e-learning? The extended range trimix manual is the oldest in our product line and does need to be updated and um, has, has been placed on the list for update. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Once that is updated, it will be placed on online. For the advanced rec, um, I don't see that on the list to be updated at the moment, so I don't believe that will make it to to uh, to e-learning quite yet. However, extended range trimix, when that is updated, it it will. Uh, Kevin is asking, when will the new flow charts and facility products be available? They are available now. Um, Two facilities. So, if you have, n if you're in North America and you have not renewed, uh, merely contact uh, HQ and um, get renewed, and we can get those products to you. If you're outside North America, just contact your your regional office for that. Uh, the flowchart is not a window sticker. Uh, the flowchart um, is a is a uh, um, a wall hanging type poster that is uh, oh, probably are, are about uh, a little less than one meter, probably about three quarters of a meter uh, high and somewhere about uh, a third of a meter or uh, 14 or 15 inches wide. So no, it is not a sticker. All right, again, I apologize for, uh, for that audio problem. I'm glad I was able to catch it. Uh, global branding, just to kind of give you an update on that. Um, our web traffic is up substantially and continues to be up substantially um, with people visiting the site. And as can be expected, the number of mobile visits versus actual PCs or laptops is changing dramatically as well and it's continuing as expected to climb each month. Our search engine optimization is continually improving and we're finding that we're showing up far, far uh, higher in the searches than we ever have before. So our newsletter traffic is up as well. Uh, sending out uh, four each month, um, one for each agency, and then also a member's newsletter. So that is continuing as so that's in continuing to uh, increase as well. And our social traffic obviously is is up in terms of Facebook, um, Instagram, and and Twitter uh, as well. So and, and it's all up uh, thanks to our members. Um, they're doing a great job in that regard, uh, posting on Facebook, getting us photos of classes with uh, the flags showing and flying and, uh, you know, being shared and, and put out there. So thank you for that. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. It really helps. It helps the members. It helps the dive centers as well. So um, Instagram, obviously, we're there as well, um, at SDI Diver at TDI Diver, at ERDI Diver as well. So 
And as I said, we're always sharing photos with uh, the flags and so on and so forth. So when you're doing classes, keep that in mind and, and uh, send the photos in. We'll get them shared. Our new regional office uh, in Brazil. Excuse me one moment is headed up by Eduardo Macedo. Uh, he is located in Brasilia and uh, has been in the industry for a number of years, for over 20 years. Uh, and as I said earlier, located in the capital city of Brasilia. Um, and this is going really well. Um, we've added uh, several new ITs in Brazil over the past couple of months as well. And uh, uh, more and more material is now becoming available in Portuguese. So um, uh, Lou, um, Eduardo can be contacted via email at eduardo.macedo at tdisdi.com um, as well. And uh, you'll see a lot of postings on Facebook as, as well for more information. So. If I can assist you further in any contact information or anything uh, like that, Lou, just, just let me know. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the video tutorials. They're available for almost every function on the website. And again, when you're logged in as an instructor, instructor trainer or facility, you'll see that link in the uh, lower right-hand corner. So you can just, you can see those there. Uh, some of the questions we get at HQ, uh, how do I register students online? This applies to those regions who allow uh, online registration. Not all regions, um, this is not available necessarily in all regions. It is in HQ, it is in several other regions. You merely log in as an instructor or facility. And on the Tools tab, you'll notice a, a uh, link on the left-hand side that says Register Students. And it is at that point there that you can register your students and just follow the prompts. Um, quite easy to, to do. Uh, I'm going to take a very quick look at questions and not seeing any. Um, how do we use the online catalog here in North America? Uh, the, Catalog requires a, a separate login, uh, so you do remember that. And just uh, a, again, click on the links that are available to you. It's it's um, quite intuitive to do, easy to do. So uh, signing up and returning to e-learning is very easy to do. You just merely log in uh, to the website, and then uh, from there, this is if you've already signed up, uh, just just select the e-learning tab and you'll see a menu of the courses that you've signed up for or have completed and you can then just select that course and and go from there to review so these courses if you have signed up for them or your students have signed up for them are available um, long after they've completed the course uh, if your student does not have a code, they can purchase the code from your facility. Merely contact HQ for those codes or contact your regional office, or you can sign up online directly as well. Um, again, to log back in, very easy to do. Just merely go to the website, log in, and then select uh, the the uh, e-learning tab and then from there just highlight or click on the link on the left and and go from there your courses will de be displayed and then you can s select the course that you want so very easy to do um, one thing um, in store certification card printing we've been doing for a number of years um, it's available in some regions, not available in all. Uh, there's a lot of benefit to doing this uh, for the obvious re re reason. Certifications are, are generally more affordable, not necessarily in all regions, but for the most part, uh, more, uh, more affordable. 
there are no fees for replacement cards. So if you have a customer or student who has lost their card, uh, wish to replace it, you have the ability to print that replacement card on the spot. So um, certainly that improves your profit margins as well. Uh, there's multiple uses for blank cards. Uh, you know, the obvious uh, are luggage tags and uh, uh, branding uh, for your dive center as well, and, um, you know, air fill cards, so on and so forth. So, um, so you do have that benefit for that. And there's no waiting for your student. It's very impressive to have that student walk back into your dive center at the end of the course and be able to present that card to them. So. E-learning, uh, currently 24 courses online, uh, covering the range of SDI, TDI, and ERDI, and, and also at the professional level as well. It's important to note that at the professional level, um, while the academics are online, there are material requirements for instructor candidates that they must have, okay? And that's required by standards, so do keep that in mind. At the diver level, the online courses uh, replace the physical manual. Of course, you will have students who do want those physical manuals to keep on the bookshelf. That's understandable, and they can use both. So it's important to learn that we consider e-learning to be blended learning. Um, so uh, one thing we started last fall was uh, ITI's Pledge to You. Um, and we make an unconditional pledge to you, unlike other agencies, and that is uh, we pledge to develop course standards that are easy to understand and, and make sense, uh, regardless of the environment or region where you teach. Okay, There is just one standard for the globe, and uh, it needs to make sense and is easy to understand. And we also pledge to support you um, unconditionally, wholeheartedly, uh, regardless of where you purchase your insurance, if you have insurance, should there be an unfortunate event in which uh, there is legal action being taken or litigation is resulting. And as long as you're uh, following the standards and materials for the course, uh, we're going to back you 100%. So we will have your back. And that is... Uh, pledged personally by uh, the president of the com company, Brian Carney. And um, I can tell you from personal experience over the past 11 years, uh, even though we did not ever say this explicitly like we are now, I can tell you that we have always done this in the past and we will continue to do this in the future. Uh, where we're going to be next, uh, Scuba Show in Long Beach is coming up uh, at the end of this week. Chris will be there uh, as well, so uh, there'll be a members update. Um, VIP will be, training update will be there as well. So uh, we'll have a presence at the tech camp coming up um, in July at uh, Vobster Key in, in the UK. And then at the end of September, there'll be a tech week in Croatia as well. So. Um, instructor Training Workshop coming up just before DEMA at HQ, as well as, I believe, although it hasn't been finalized, a scubility training as well at HQ. So something to, to keep in mind for that. I'm going to take a very quick look to see if we have any questions. Um, and not seeing anything. So we'll continue on. Uh, very briefly, we talked about the dive insurance. It's almost here. Uh, we're just a matter of a few days away from launching here in North America. And then uh, the, the next region after that will be Australia. Um, in fact, the brokers have been, uh, been lined up and are going through uh, uh, training for that uh, as well. So, And then branching out into other regions. Briefly discuss some uh, training updates here regarding the standards for both SDI and TDI. Um, very briefly, briefly talked about some new products and services, uh, dry suit, new dry suit manual that's, uh, that's launched as well as VIP products. And facility products uh, such as 
branding uh, materials like posters, flowcharts, so on and so forth, and how that marketing is working, their global brand awareness, and just a reminder about the website audits that we're doing uh, for your facility. Again, just contact uh, our marketing department, um, and if you're not sure who to contact, just contact me, paul.montgomery at tdisdi.com. Uh, we did talk about our new Brazil regional office, uh, Eduardo in Brasilia, and just basically some uh, frequently asked questions and where we're going to be uh, coming up in the future. So um, again, I want to thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule, taking time out of your evening. Um, if you're on the East Coast, thank you for getting up early and, and joining us for this webinar. Uh, both Chris and myself really enjoy doing these. It's, it's great to contact, uh, to be in contact and to connect with our, our members. Uh, we really enjoy delivering these webinars this way um, rather than uh, just sending things out to you by email or, or by snail mail. So. Uh, I'm going to take a very quick look to um, see if there are, are uh, any others, any other questions. Um, Elena, you're welcome. Thank you for attending. And just to uh, kind of review, we've we've had people join us from uh, all over the all over the globe. We've had some. Uh, We've had members from Russia, uh, our regional office from uh, Russia. We've had from Brazil, from Australia, from uh, from all over. So, uh, Kel, I see that your hand is up. Uh, and let's see if I can find your question. Or actually, Kel, I'm going to unmute you. Um, so, if you'd like to to ask your ask your question or comment, go right ahead. You're unmuted. Thanks very much. No, the only comment I have has been uh, very good. And easy to understand. It's the first um, webinar I've been with you guys, and I appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome, Cal. It's um, uh, always great to, to talk with you. Great to see you um, at DEMA as, as well. So, and again, I know it's uh, 8 o'clock in the evening where you are, so we appreciate you taking time out of your, uh, out of your uh, uh, evening to, to attend that. So, thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. And let's see, I've got another question there. Um, let's see. Ah, from Simon. Uh, would be nice if there was some sort of summary on the system to show who else is online just from a community perspective. You, you know, that that is good. It's, um, you know, it's nice when you're um, – sitting in a room doing these updates and members are, are able to talk with each other and and and, uh, and socialize and all and, and I agree that that's a good idea from a technical standpoint I don't know if that feature is available um, within the webinar or go to webinar uh, product uh, uh, this is a purchased product that we utilize. It's not the free, it's not the free version. Um, so th there are some restrictions and limitations. Uh, one of them is uh, the number of people who can attend. We have a a uh, in our version a limit of, of 100 uh, to attend. But um, that that is. Uh, that is an interesting point, and and one that I'll bring up to our technology department who uh, arranges this. So, thank you for that. And uh, Kevin, webinars for additional info and possible instructor training. Um, you know, webinars are a great tool. Um, we are doing that now um, for crossovers for um, cases of renewals where somebody has not been uh, active with us for several years, for example. We do utilize that. Um, but it certainly can be expanded to to use other things as well. So uh, that's a great idea, Kevin, and, and one that I'll bring forward. So. Um, 
Okay, I've got uh, multiple comments thanking for the webinar and uh, encouraging the use and and uh, that people like it. So thank you for your comments and and again, uh, thank you for taking the time to attend. Um, again, we have people taking time out of their evening, out of their afternoon, and out of their morning. So thank you very much uh, for that. Um, I <laughs> and from uh, Michael, thanks for holding this uh, at a decent time for Australians. That's exactly why um, I got up at 4.30 this morning, local time. I'm an early riser to start with, so it's no problem for me. But we do hold all of these at various times, um, you know, so that we can reach all markets in, in all regions. So it's our pleasure to be able to do that. And, and again, we have to thank you for attending. So. And then we have another one, a uh, question from Les, uh, who indicates he may have missed this, but will this be available for future review? Uh, I have recorded this, um, and I have to be very frank with you. Um, I've clicked the record button, so it has been recorded. Now, how I get from point A to point B to make this available to you, I have to research and we'll work with our technology department. Uh, we've recorded all of these. We've, we've, we've done six of them, five in English, one in Spanish, and we will be offering one of them. I don't know which one, so it could be mine or it could be Chris's that is offered. So. Well, all right, we've uh, maxed out our, our hour. So again, thank you very much for attending. I wish you a great evening or a great day. And uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Thanks again.